Before we continue, we would like to personally introduce the members of the orchestra who have put up a tremendous amount of work in presenting the program. On the Natuangam this evening, we have Navya's guru and her mother, Srimati Gayatri Ramaratnam, senior disciple of Padma Shri Professor Sudharani Raghupati of Sri Bharatalaya Chennai. Supporting Gayatri on the symbols is Srimati Aishwarya Anand Karthik, another senior disciple of Sudham Anti, an established dancer and guru in Bangalore. The vocalist for this evening's performance is Srimati Jyotsana. On the Mridangam is Sri G. S. Nagaraj. On violin is Sri Mysur Dayakar Sir. On the flute we have Sri Skanda Kumar. And on the rhythm bat we have a very talented and vibrant youngster Sri Sai Vamshi. Before we move on to the next item, I would like you to give, get a glimpse into Sri Harikesh Nallur Muthaya Bhagavatar and his life's journey. Harikesh Nallur Muthaya Bhagavatar, from the year 1877 to 1945, was a very charismatic exponent of Harikatha and a seasoned punster. He was born on November 15, 1877 in Harikesh in Allur, a small village in the Trinalveli district in the late 19th century. The death of his father forced young Muthaya to move from Punalveli to Harikesh in Allur, a village he made famous by affixing its name to his own. Muthaya was sent to Tirvayar by his uncle Lakshmana Suri to learn the Shastras. But the atmosphere there was charged with the melodies of Carnatic music. And soon Muthaya found himself at the residence of Guru Sambashiva Ayer of the Sishya Parampara of Saint Tyagaraja to become a skilled musician. In 1904, Muthaya shifted to Harikatha and made an indelible mark there. T. N. Sheshagopalan, a very renowned vocalist, a disciple of Ramanadapuram Shankara Shivam, who in turn taught, was taught by Muthaya, says, the most common reason cited for this shift is that his voice lost its timbre. But I prefer to look at the positive side. Bhagavatar had five attributes most essential for a Harikatha performer. He had knowledge of the Sastras, was well versed in music, had a captivating stage presence, could keep the audience enraptured and above all had a voice that could reach a large audience so important in those Mikeless days. Mutaya Bhagavatar composed almost 400 musical forms, the largest among the post Trinity composers, Tanavarnams, Padavarnams, Daruvarnams, Ragamalikas, individual and group kritis that include Navavarnam, Navagraham, 108 songs in praise of Shiva and Shamundeshuri, apart from Stutis and Kirtanas and patriotic songs, Tillanas and folk tunes. The songs on number of Hindu gods, his patrons, and in four languages, Telugu, Tamil, Sanskrit, and Kannada, almost 20 ragams owe their existence today to this great composer, including Vijaya Saraswati, Hamsa Gamini, Karnaranjani, Buddha Manohari, Niroshta, and Hamsanandi. When someone asked if he could compose something that would appeal to Westerners, he composed the English note made famous by Sri Madhura Mani Ayer. He popularized Shanmuga Priya and Mohana Kalyani. He was adept at playing both the Chitra Bina and Rudangam. In addition to musical talents, his theoretical knowledge was also vast. He wrote a treatise on musical theory, Sangeeta Kalpadraman, and regularly gave lectures on musicology at the Music Academy. His disciples include K.A. Srinivasan, whom he proudly announced as his number one disciple, and he also acted in various movies. He was awarded the title Vidwan by the then Mysore Sama Sadhanam. K. Srinivasan's wife is Pichumani Ammal, and she has two sons and two daughters. This was a small intro to the great Harikesh Nallur Muttaya Bhagavat. We move on to the next item, 
that will be presented by Navya today. Navya, who has been learning music under the tutelage of Sri Vasudevan Sir, who is present amidst us, a musicologist, a music teacher here in Bengaluru, will now give you all the introduction to the piece de resistance in her own way. Navya presenting Varna. Everybody, I'm Navya, well, the dancer. And today I'm going to be explaining the Varnam I'm going to do. So I will be giving you a brief idea of the Varnam, Mate Malaya Dwaja, a Muttaya Bhagavadar composition. So the Pallavi goes Mate Malaya Dwaja Pandya Sanjate. To these lines, I will elaborate the beauty and greatness of Devi as written in the Saundarya Lahiri. She who resides in the bejeweled Ratnadvipa is seated inside a dazzling gold mantapa, so resplendent that it is beyond the imagination of the human mind. The four gods, Brahma, the deity of evolution, Vishnu, the deity of sustenance, Rudra, the deity of involution, and Ishvara, the deity of convergence, into Brahman, form the legs of her gem-embedded throne. Sadashiva remains the blissful witness to the goddess's Maya Karya as the seat of her throne. With a mere look, she enables the creation of the three worlds and the Panchabhutas, air, water, fire, land, and space. She instills life to the entire cosmos right from the tiniest worm to a mighty elephant. Following this, I will emphasize Devi as the loving mother of Matanga Ganapati, the elephant-faced Ganesha. Story goes that Parvati longed for a son, and with great penance and her ability to instill life, she made a child, one of great beauty. She instructed her son to guard the gates while she freshened up. Unfortunate turn of events occurs when Lord Shiva returns to his abode just to be blocked by his own son, of which he had no knowledge. A fierce battle ensues, leaving the child's head severed. Parvati is devastated to see her son and order Shiva to bring him back to life. Shiva instructed that the head of the first living being nearby be brought immediately. The head of an elephant calf is brought and affixed to the child, thus giving life to Ganesha. In the Anupallavi, Shato Dari Shankari Chamun Deshwari Chandra Kala Dari Taye Gauri. Here to these lines, I will be depicting the story of Chamundeshwari, the slayer of the indomitable Asuras of Dwapara Yuga. I will be representing Durga as described in the verses from the Durga Saptashati, otherwise known as the Devi Mahatmyam. Chanda and Munda hear about the supreme beauty of Devi and convey the same to their kings, Shumba and Nishumba, the rulers of Asuras. Devi conveys that she has vowed to marry the man who wins her in battle. After attempts by Dhumralochana and his army fail, Chanda and Munda are deployed to abduct Devi and bring her to the demonic brothers. However, Devi slays both Chanda and Munda, thereby giving her the name Chamundeshwari. She then vanquishes Shumba and Nishumba, thus freeing the devas of destruction and devastation of the three worlds. And so, let's continue with this evening. Thank you.
ಗಳಾಂ ಕುತಕ್ಕ ದಿಕ್ಕುತಕ್ಕ ತಿಂಗಿಣ್ಣ ತೊಂ ಥಣ್ಣೆ ಕುತ ಗಿಣ್ಣ ಕುತಕ್ಕ ಜಂ ತರಿತ್ತ ದಣ್ಣ ಥಣ್ಣತ್ತ ಚಣ್ಣು ಚಣ್ಣುತ್ತ ದಿಮಿ ದಿಮಿತ ದಣ್ಣೆ ಕುತ ಗಿಣ್ಣ ಕುತಕ್ಕ ಜಂ ತರಿತ್ತ ದಣ್ಣ ಥಣ್ಣತ್ತ ಚಣ್ಣು ಚಣ್ಣುತ್ತ ದಿಮಿ ದಿಮಿತ ದಣ್ಣ ದಣ್ಣತ್ತ ದಣ್ಣ ಥಣ್ಣ ದಣ್ಣತ್ತ ಚಣ್ಣು ಚಣ್ಣು ಚಣ್ಣುತ್ತ ದಿಮಿ ದಿಮಿ ದಿಮಿತ ಕಿಟ ಧರಿತ ದಣ್ಣತ ಧಣುತ ದಿಮಿತ ಧರಿತ ಧಣತ ಜಣುತ ದಿಮಿದ ಝಂ ಅದ ಕಡದ ಗದರಿಗಿಡ ತೋಂ ತ ತ ಝಂ ಅದ ಕಡದ ಗದರಿಗಿಡ ತೋಂ ತ ತ ಝಂ ತ ಕಡದ ಗದರಿಗಿಡ ತೋಂ ಯಶ 
यशो दे द्विशो जहे यशो दे द्विशो जहे यशो
I think we can hear another round of applause for the young dancers.